Right, so we're going to do, we've been asked to do another video of walkthroughs, break and runs, which I'll try and explain thought patterns, process and shot choices as we go. We're going to go with a cut break and we're in it relatively firm. We'll see if we end up with any clusters or problem areas. Perfect, a massive cluster that we've got to try and work out. So, the only sensible option here is to try and take on yellows. I mean, in all honesty, the sensible option might just be to play safe. But for the purposes of a, of a video trying to explain runouts, we're going to be going for it. And we've got two different ways of trying to break these balls out. One of them would be coming at it from the bottom, which I wouldn't recommend because you're just going to be pushing your balls into problems and you're not likely to promote this one particularly well. Or we want to have our white somewhere here and play this controllable cut into the here where we can cannon and hopefully open all of the balls up and through. So we really want to be somewhere really close to where that yellow is. Um, the only way I can see of doing that to start with is if we play the long plant as our first shot and we try and stop our white somewhere there. So that's going to be the shot that we try to start. So we've got that on and now is the, the split shot. As I mentioned earlier, controllable is, is the word. We don't really want to be whacking this as hard as we can and hoping. We want to be playing the shot where if we end up leaving our white in that area, this yellow still comes up to here. So it's something you always want to look at when splitting balls out. So we'll be playing this cut. We're trying to move these two and in turn promote these balls. This one doesn't need to move very far and this is going to be open, but this little fella here, we're going to need that to cannon and knock out so we're not as i say not it, it's not a really hard shot we're playing really to push this red on and off the cushion and open these two out so medium pace a little bit of top and they split out not too bad provided can actually see the loop ball. I'm not convinced we can, and we can't get to the one over the pocket. So this is where our backup ball. We still left this one on. And that was our. The reason of not playing that particularly hard is that we wanted to leave that line for this shot, and it's now one that we're going to have to take on. Really, we've just got to push it in. It's play for the pot position takes care of itself because of that yellow that's up near the top pocket. through and there we are we're in good shape for our next yellow I'm quite tempted on this one rather than playing the, the safe shot and coming down middle of the table is we, we actually play the stun all the way down so we're in this bottom third not too far down and not too far up up's better than down because then we've still got a nice easy controllable shot so anywhere from sort of from here to here is our is our window if you like of where we want the white to be so we're just stunning three quarters of the way down the table and that's within our window from here it's it's a gentle drop in we're gonna to have to make sure to play this soft enough that we don't accidentally follow one yellow through to the other because it will leave us without a shot so it's just a gentle little roll in, stopping our white there, stopping the yellow over the pocket. So round about exactly what we wanted. Now we can bring our white back out into mid table for the yellow in the middle and black in the other middle. marginally short on pace but not too difficult to push up to the top cushion and wipe back down to the middle <laughs> so 
third shot in a row, marginally short pace, but still open for the black in the middle. We've managed to leave ourselves a shot each time. Break again, Let's see what we leave. Part of this whole thought process is having a, a clear idea, a clear route in your head of where you're going to be going with the balls, how you're going to be taking them out. And that just helps you, helps you to be clear and confident from the start of your visit. Everyone at some point will have to reroute there'll be a mistake that they made or, or some other way that, that you're gonna to have to adapt to, to the way you're taking the balls out but if you've got a clear plan in your head it almost breeds more confidence in the shots that you're taking on um, from here we're going to take the yellows we've got you, you can sort of plan your way around and, and think about each of the shots that you're taking in the row I mean Ideally, the last three balls here are going to be this one up in the corner and a very gentle touch into for this one into the middle, which is going to leave this yellow almost exactly where that is. Your white would still be in this area and then you'd just be dropping it in, leaving your white here for the black up into the corner. So the secret would be trying to take out these four before leaving yourself somewhere here for that up into there. However, that would be relatively straightforward if, say, your white was starting here and you could just drop that in, roll forward and take these out. Not our starting position though. Our starting position is off angle on this one so our white goes this way, or off angle on this one so our white goes over there. Not a, not a fabulously good starting position for us to be in, but we've got a shot so we've got to be happy with it. What I think this probably means is that we're going to leave this one here alone and in that last three that we were talking about earlier, after we've played this one and that plant, that ball into that corner is going to be the shot after. Um, and then we'll be coming back up into this area for the, for the drop in. So we now have to plan this one in because in the getting rid of those four down there, that one doesn't factor in very well from the start angle that we've got. So we're going to be dropping this one into the middle, bringing our white down into this area this yellow into that middle, leaving our white somewhere around this area so we're just in and straight on this line. And then we've got the four that we mentioned earlier. So we're looking at coming out somewhere in this sort of area here after this shot. So it's just popping this one, pushing on and off of that side cushion there and out into that little open area that we want to be in. Tiny bit of top, little push through. And yeah, almost there, just off straight. Not a bad option. So when we pop this, we're just taking our white inch or so forward. And we've got a delicate little cut into this corner now. We want to stay on this, this sort of line that our white's on at the moment. It's the, the same line that we want to be on. Um, Is it still possible? Have I left myself too thin on it? Probably. What are our alternatives and our options? Well, the next shot we could play to come past this yellow. But I think we're bringing this red into play. We now have a, a potential reroute on our hands. And the reroute's not too bad from this angle I don't think. I think our rear is just going to involve us pushing the whites forward and coming up into this gap here so even if we come up and we touch that black it's still okay as long as we can push our white through and past the red up here. Yep, that's just about right. And then we can stop our white here, 
we can take this one in, leave ourselves the angle that we wanted earlier on this, but to then come out two cushions and into our open area for the last, last yellow and black. A very gentle drop. Another relatively gentle drop, just pushing our white over towards that that red in the right angle that we want. Yep, not too bad at all. And now we can just push this one through a tiny bit of left hand side off the cushion back up into this sort of middle table area. Despite the reroute, we've managed to find our way round to this shot that we wanted towards the end of this, which is white to the cushion and almost straight in on black into the corner. So, forced into the reroute there, but still worked our way around that finish. The good part about leaving options for yourselves. Now I think the cut break hit well is a fantastic weapon. Break hit badly does tend to leave clusters. So we're cut breaking again. And well, I guess we hit that one well. Take the red saw, the yellows here, really. Everything's open, you get in the right area, and they're all. Really straightforward pots. Um, I think as it's a bit more delicate, we might take the yellows. Just so as then we can play. Maybe a touch cannon somewhere. <laughs> we'll, ta we'll take the yellows anyways. And after our ball one and two, if we're down in this sort of area here, so in this line, we'll be taking the yellow into the middle and pushing our white up towards that black. For no particular reason why we're doing this. Uh, just figure the yellows, we might play a cannon while we're doing it. So we're just going to screw on and off the side cushion. And that leaves us a, a gentle drop into this. We're trying to leave somewhere towards this line. So between the, the pocket and the yellow on that kind of line there. We're a little bit low, but still in good shape. Another gentle drop into the middle. will be of a choice of different yellows really. But this is the only shot that really needs a bit of care and attention. It's where the where this finish can go wrong. You could very gently drop that one into the middle. But leave your white in this sort of area here and you'll be having to play that one in and come back over for this. Definitely a potential shot, that could happen. We could take that one into the corner, bring our white back on and off. If we're doing that, we've got to make sure that we don't finish high of that yellow, that we finish somewhere in this lower area here. Um, and then you can take the, take the balls into the middle. I think, 
because we've been playing these lovely and gentle, we're going to continue on this gentle theme and we're going to play a very gentle shot in the middle. Play a really gentle shot this one into here, leaving our white for the gentle ball in there. And what we're trying to do is make our cue ball move as little as possible, really. Another very gentle drop in. And this finish has been done without the cue ball really, but apart from the first shot where we had to screw it on and off that cushion, this cue ball's hardly moved at all. And that, I think, is what makes some finishes easier than Cut break again. cut break we've got one real problem which is this area down here how easily is it solvable So, so, I would say. I think for me, it's, it, it's another one where we can go about this a couple of different ways. But because of the layout and what we can see here, if, if we can leave the angle to play a ball into this middle and come off two cushions and touch into this, we're guaranteeing leaving ourselves on this red here. We pretty much have to take the one in the middle here as our first shot, regardless. So we're thinking that our, our cannon, instead of trying to play our cannon the easy one, which is off of this one and, and here, which is sort of uncontrolled, and our white one is stuck in this little area, this corner, we can play off a couple of cushions and into this. We're leaving ourselves on this ball and hopefully promoting this one up somewhere close to to the middle area of the table or even just into the pocket it's nearest to. So it's all about picking the right angle and the right shot. If we were just further up the table we'd bring our white down here and we'd definitely take this one on as our two cushion and in. But I don't think that's going to be quite right because when we when we play this the best we can do with our white really is, is leave it here that means that is then not a natural two cushions and in because we'll come up short so we'll probably play this one second but down with some right hand side to come over into this this is where every situation that you come to on the table is a little bit different to the last you have to adapt to which shots you think you can or can't play. <coughs> and every player will be slightly different and they'll be more confident on certain shots. For me, this is this is one where, where you're sort of playing a very you are screwing the ball down the table, but you you have to play this with right hand side so as when the white contacts this bottom cushion, it widens the angle over and into this these two here. So bit of screw. And right hand side and we've got way too much screw into it we got really lucky and we've left ourselves a possibility of getting this red out anyway we could screw directly into this but we're going to punch cushion into the yellow and hopefully it means we're pushing that red off of this yellow and out into the open and our white will hopefully follow it out into the open area. So, punch shot into the pocket, white off the cushion into the yellow. And that has managed to leave us on both of the other two balls. This is a good result. We're going to go middle first though. Because it should drop us out onto an angle where we can play the ball that we've just developed. We don't even 
even need to play this shot hard. We can just pop the red, stun the white in, and leave ourselves on this line for the cut in the corner, back up for the black in the middle. fairly straightforward. Once we've got that little bit of fortune on the split shot. But it's absolutely not as intended. We've got way too much screw into it. But still got away with it. Got the balls moving. And that I suppose is a demonstration of why tack is Probably more important or more devastating than, than defending. Because if you're defending at that stage, your opponent's definitely coming back to the table. Your attacking might go not exactly to plan, but you still got through it. And your opponent doesn't get to come to the table. Yeah. This one's not too bad in the way it's opened. Depending on your rule set here, depends on how you'd take these out, but still play mostly to black ball, so because it's an open table, open shot. If our first shot is this plant here and we get the yellow in the corner pocket. And we've kind of got an open go at the rest of the rest of the table. In doing so, we're going to be pushing our white on and off the bottom cushion. And we might even try and move this little area here into a promoted space. We missed that initial cannon. But we still come out alright. We're going to play a very, very delicate shot here. The delicate shot is to just flick this yellow off the black. We're only doing this so as we hopefully open this yellow into here. It's a real gentle shot because the black only needs to turn over you know, half a ball to a, to a full ball. And we then have a much easier route of finishing the table. So we are playing it off the black and in, but we're playing it very gently off the black and into the pocket. And then we leave our open, our open area, if you like, for the for the last few balls. And the next one's going to be this one into the corner. We're just going to screw over to this side cushion and get rid of this, the only awkward ball that's left, really. And the other three should then be straightforward. So this is a, a gentle screw shot, tiny bit of right hand side, just to stop the cue ball when it hits the cushion. That's held it quite nice there. So we can just dig down a little bit onto this ball, stun our white back up into the open, uh, the open area of the table, leaving us on the probably a choice of these two because this is likely to be our last ball. And as it turns out, that's about as bad as I could have played it. Regroup. We're going to play another cannon shot. We'll play the yellow off the black and into the corner pocket. We've got away with that one. We've kept ourselves on this yellow up here. So push it on and off the cushion. We bring it back into this area for the yellow into the other middle. a little screw back from the black down into the corner. Even the dog's excited about that one. 